The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Welcome to Bronx Talk. For years, Bronx advocates had urged the city to take down the Sheridan Expressway. It had been dubbed the highway to nowhere, but opponents had argued that doing so would have the opposite effect of improving air quality and other quality of life factors in the South Bronx because it would increase street tra truck traffic. So now that it appears that the city is not about to take that short highway down, what is to be done to improve the conditions around the Sheridan? And if there are ideas, will anyone listen to them and or apply them? It's a fundamental question that speaks to the Bronx environment and community control and Bronx Heights' ability to affect conditions around them, something that we address on an ongoing basis on this program and in the Bronx. Now, if you'd like to weigh in with questions or comments on the Sheridan Expressway, then please call in at 718-960-7241 or email your thoughts or questions to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com and we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our program. For now, from an alliance of Bronx groups concerned with the Sheridan called Southern Bronx River Watershed Alliance, please join me in welcoming the Executive Director of Youth Ministries for Peace and Justice. It's David Shuffler. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you, Thank Alex, you for, for joining us. us. And also from the Pratt Center, it's Elena Conti. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Uh, David, let's talk with you a little bit about the sure. history of it. I guess you and um, many of your neighbors and colleagues in, the, in that part of the Bronx have said, you know what, this has to come down. Why did you want to take it down? Sure. So the Sheridan Expressway, as you probably know, Gary, is uh, 1.25 miles long. Um, it was a highway that originally was extended to, uh, was expected to extend uh, further uh, into um, uh, the Bruckner and, and connect um, up north and was not, um, it was halted as a result of the Bronx Zoo. Um, and for us, uh, it, we, it presents a critical opportunity for us to really look at uh, the larger transportation network in the Bronx, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, we're, we're in a community, the Bronx River Soundview community is a neighborhood that has some of the highest asthma rates. Uh, you know, if you look at where some of the schools are located, we're talking about in the footprint of the Sheridan Expressway. Um, so the redevelopment of this, the, the, this potential highway that is pretty redundant and underutilized presents some opportunities for housing development, um, as well as uh, some more pedestrian access from West Farms into the uh, new Starlight Park. Um, so we think this is a great project and opportunity for Bronx sites all across uh, the borough. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it under two miles, mm -hmm. uh, however, it does provide truck access for the very busy Hunts Point uh, market. And uh, what about the dynamic that I established at the top mm -hmm. of the show? Well, you know what? We know that you want to take it down. But uh, many people believe that if you do take it down, uh, trucks will then be routed through the streets, which frankly is just the opposite mm -hmm. of the kind of thing that you yeah, want. Yeah. Uh, did, uh, Elena, are you uh, qualified to, to yeah, speak on Yeah, I mean, that? of course we both are. Um, but uh, so it, the thing about the Sheridan Expressway is that while there are trucks on it, it doesn't actually provide any direct access into the Hunts Point Peninsula. Cool. So they where still the have to go are. across it, get off the Sheridan, and then go through go through some of the exactly. streets. Exactly, and that's one of the biggest problems that the Alliance has with it, is that it doesn't, it doesn't connect. And so as a part of our community planning, um, removing the Sheridan or even radically transforming it, right, what you could do is uh, create direct access into the Hunts Point Peninsula off of the Bruckner Expressway. So right now, if you are uh, a, a, a truck coming south on the Sheridan and you want to go into the Hunts Point Peninsula, you have to exit at Westchester Avenue, 
um, and you go on to Whitlock, um, which is right next to the residential community, um, there are uncontrolled intersections, lanes merging together from the, the Bruckner local. This is where also if you're a car, you know it because you see the Hunts Point train station coming there. Um, and you're riding these, these local streets um, all the way down and around uh, to get into the peninsula. So it's not direct. It doesn't even work now. I, I am not a car, but no, I've been in a car <laughs> and I have seen and, and lived exactly what you're saying. It's mm -hmm. a little bit crazy as mm -hmm. you get off and then you're like, well, wait a minute. I, I really meant to be over there. Mm -hmm. and, right. and I've been Happens. there. I can't even tell you. How how many right. times, but still I've had to go all over the place. One would think that especially a truck driver who's making a delivery or making a pickup is going to be in an even worse situation because he's less familiar than the roads even than I am. I've lived here all my life. Absolutely. Right. right? Is that, that what we're talking about? Exactly. And what's crazy for a driver is dangerous for a pedestrian. Mm -hmm. So then uh, why uh, are we at the point, and I asked you this, maybe David you can respond to this, uh, I asked you at the beginning, we're at a point now where the city has studied it to some degree. We know there's mm -hmm. still some more studies going on. We're at this point where you're saying, well, we understand they're not going to do what we wanted to do. I realize it's been a long dialogue, and we've had it on this show a number of times. Um, why are we at that point now? Mm -hmm. What happened? I think our, our plan, our vision for the, sh the redevelopment of the Sheridan Expressway um, was one that, that encompassed a whole lot of different things, right? Uh, and it, it also made recommendations for uh, out places outside of the Sheridan Expressway for that removal to be possible. Uh, for us, we still think that um, that a, a removal maximizes the the benefits that you could potentially have with developable land, uh, creating access to the river. Um, we also feel like you know, in some of the scenarios and things that the city's presented, does share some exciting opportunities as well, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, that we ha we are in agreement um, with the city that there needs to be direct access into Hunts Point. The only way you could ever entertain removal moving, remodeling the Sheridan Expressway is when you create direct access into Hunts Point. So the, this whole idea and concept of Oak Point ramps, which will take trucks off of the, the, the regular streets, creates some opportunity for us to really look at the Sheridan Expressway. In, in a strange way, I'm going to ask you this question, and that, that is, in, in a strange way, did you like ask for too much? Is saying hmm. we want to take the Sheridan down, we want to remodel a whole region, mm -hmm. is that really too much for the city to swallow and they can never say, gee whiz, we can think that globally, and they'll just say, well, let's just deal with the Sheridan mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. I think I think it's hard for folks to to um, uh, think uh, outside the box sometimes, right. right? Especially with an infrastructure that has been there for close to about sixty some odd years right. now, right? So, the the uh, for the majority of the people who are working on on the Sheridan redevelopment or or growth or whatever the case is, it's it's something that has existed our entire lives. Mm -hmm. so I would say, so. Elena, as I have understood it from dialogues with a number of people, sure. uh, that. The city was entertaining it, was studying it, and then all of a sudden the notion that the people the Hunts Point market said, you know what, if you take that down, we're going to New Jersey. So all of a sudden uh, the city was like, uh-oh, you know what, we like these people in the Bronx, maybe, but we, we understand what they're saying, but we don't want to lose the Hunts Point market. Is the existence of the Hunts Point market and the vital economic engine it, that it is tied into the existence of the Sheridan Expressway? No. Hmm. Um, Do you believe the scenario that I just painted, that that dialogue was probably had somewhere? So we understand that the, the Hunts Point Markets has been negotiating a long-term lease with the city of New York for quite a while. Um, it still doesn't have its long-term lease. It's been several years. There have been extensions and there have been a whole suite of issues, um, including how much money is the city going to be putting into the redevelopment, um, uh, issues with the Business Integrity Commission. There are, as I understand it, any number of things that can come into play in the midst of a negotiation. Um, and it's entirely possible uh, that some of that has come up here. But the question, I think, is, is um, well, the question is not so much that as it is what will the changes to the roadway network do for the economic potential of the area. And direct access at Oak Point has been something where there is unanimity, right, between everyone about how essential that is for supporting those markets and supporting the community as well. What's the price tag on that? And do you think the city and the, uh, maybe some of the state 
<laughs> monies would have to come because it's uh, state roadways. What, what, what's uh, the For price the tag on access? that, and is that is that realistic? Or the development. At this point, mm -hmm. e well, let's right. talk with direct access. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we do have pictures and other things that you folks right. brought. But um, what is the price tag uh, at the bottom line to say, well, direct access, we're going to build rampways, that mm -hmm. stuff gets mm -hmm. expensive. Sure, it could get expensive. The thing is that there's a number of ways to do it, and that's part of what is being studied now, and we hope will be studied further, right? There's a way to do it that creates four-way access with a flyover ramp that um, we have a diagram on that was initially mm -hmm. entertained when the state was mm -hmm. beginning to study and design this, because mm -hmm. this has been an essential feature of it. And there is a way to do um, access that uh, is uh, quicker to implement, but doesn't provide perhaps um, as much benefit of alleviating traffic mm -hmm. from the local streets, right? A because dollars, it's two, two way. Billion dollars? No, no, not nothing, in, not anywhere in that ballpark. Well shy of a billion. I mean, I wouldn't even. Well, there's no B. There. There's I, no I B was in this. literally no There B, is no B in this. <laughs> yeah. I'm, 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 I was literally just throwing yeah. numbers out because yeah. frankly, I hadn't. Uh, the research hasn't shown right. up any, any yeah. numbers. Mm -hmm. Nobody's talking about right. it. And Gary, I should also mention that in all of the scenarios that the city is looking at right now, every single one of them assumes that they are going to do direct access into the peninsula because it's an absolute necessity for transforming the area and everyone is in agreement that this has been needed long overdue. Mm -hmm. David, uh, do you agree sure. with that, that um, th there is that idea that there would be direct access? And frankly, if there is direct access from the Bruckner, mm -hmm. why aren't we talking about taking down the Sheridan? And I think that, is that, is that that's a sort of question. That's why we're here. I think we're <laughs> here to, to we exist to bring folks along in this conversation of looking at what the highway network could potentially look like. We honestly believe that with um, the Oak Point ramps and some minor tweaks to some ramps and some street closures and directions that that the, it may lend itself. It will lend itself to to creating direct access and getting trucks off the street. And the city data has proven right that, uh, that some of the options, the modified options, um, does create shorter routes for some trucks to get into Hunts Point. So, you know, yeah. I'm just thinking from having sat in this chair for almost two decades now, um, I remember at least 10 years ago, at least I had a dialogue uh, with some, mm -hmm. I guess, antecedents of you folks. They were here <laughs> before you. And we had the same dialogue that now finally we're going to take a look at the mm -hmm. traffic routes and all that. Mm -hmm. D do you think that now there is a cooperative spirit or is it still a case of the community saying to the city, we want this, we have a mm -hmm. global look at this, we have an environmental look at this, and you're still not able to get real cooperation on the other side? So I, w I will say we, we are, our, our relationship is, is, is growing. Um, and I think a lot of what, what we want um, as, as community groups and technical assistance providers um, pushes that of what the city wants. Um, what we can say is that we, we, are, we have a friendly relationship where we're having conversations for the most part. They, they come to you and say, gee, what ideas do you have now? It hasn't quite gotten there. Maybe, but, maybe but not that hopeful. Hopeful. <laughs> Maybe hopeful is the word. Is hopeful, hopeful, right? right? And, yeah. and le also, let me. The last thing I'll say is that the what the city's putting together from this study is our recommendations and proposals for what could potentially be put here. Okay, what I want to do is uh, I don't know what order we have them, but we have a number of pictures and mm -hmm. diagrams, so we're just going to put them up, and I'm going to let you do show sure. and tell for sure. me and for the audience. So let's let's see what the first one we have there. Um, these are this is now now what is this? This certainly is a lovely vision. Where is this, and what is this? Right, absolutely. So this is actually from the original community plan that the Alliance did back in 2006. This is the Sheridan Expressway without the Sheridan. Right, but actually this is a portion of the, of the footprint or the area adjacent to the Sheridan Expressway that's also next to the Bronx River. What I want to point out here is that this vision for redevelopment that could include affordable housing um, is absolutely possible in one of the versions that the city still has on the table in the modify option. Right, okay. So we could still see this. So we could still see this mm -hmm. one. Yeah. And, how, and these would be, presumably, uh, we don't want to gentrify, these mm -hmm. would be affordable uh, homes no, that would no. maybe replace some homes or invite Bronxites to mm -hmm. either have ownership or I'd, li I'd like to even think green buildings. Or that is our vision and Smart we will be fighting building. for it tooth and nail. Well, mm -hmm. okay. The, the, and the fight has begun here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? Go ahead. Let it rip. What do we got? So we had seen a, are we gonna, there we go. Now what is this? 
Uh, this is just uh, an image that shows the original sort of design options for that access into into Oak Point, the direct access mm -hmm. into the peninsula. This okay. is one route um, that's sort of that full-fledged four-way pathway. Okay, that's so at the heart of it. so that's the Bruckner that we're looking at. Exactly. This is what creates right now. Um, you have and to the be Sheridan on the is, it, is yeah. in essence parallel to that on a part of it. Right? Well, um, it's going uh, from south north the way that that uh, image is uh, oriented okay. right now. So um, the Sheridan is is uh, farther north of that. Farther and north connect. of that. Yeah. But you're mm -hmm. saying, and those blue uh, uh, capillaries, as it were, that are mm -hmm. leading down to the bottom portion, those are the roadways would ha that would have to be created. Exactly. Correct. And are those the roadways that would be created above the streets, or is that just remodeling those entry points into Hunts Point? In, in that, uh, this is the four-way flyover, so this is the most extensive one. So it sort of, it looks like a, um, the bottom of your drain pipe, sort of underneath the sink at the <laughs> bottom part there. That yes. connects into a roadway, mm -hmm. Oak Point Avenue. Um, Got and it. so they come down, they descend okay. to regular streets. And you think mm -hmm. that that could be done for, for under a billion dollars? Yes. Okay, just, just asking. <laughs> right, next, what do we got? Um, th just quickly, uh, this is just sort of uh, sections of the entire area uh, that is being looked at by the city study. And it represents those red boxes. Those red boxes sense. are sort of different neighborhoods and sections that have different issues related to both transportation and land use. And and the section above it, mm -hmm. uh, that that is uh, like the striped lines. That's you know the gray uh, striped lines above it. I'm not uh, sure not if I see the same lines, oh, but okay. basically, I just we want to represent that there are more than 180,000 people that are going to be impacted, impacted by what happens in All this right. area. Keep going. What's mm -hmm. next? I know we have a bunch of them. Yeah, sure. And then what is this? Again, this is just the roadway network because it's very easy to think that this is about the Sheridan or not about the Sheridan, that particular roadway. Um, and just want to point out that there are things that are being looked at in terms of improvements on the Bronx River Parkway, on the Bruckner Expressway, mm -hmm. and, and that having the answer to this problem is about looking at the entire network. And again, I, I'm, if we can come back here for a second, because I want to throw it back to David. Yeah. Um, are, are we asking too much? I mean, I understand that you and, and Elena, you with the Pratt Institute that thinks outside the box, mm -hmm. could step back and take a look and say, well, you know, if you do this, then you can work with the Bronx River Parkway. You can deal no. with part of the Cross Bronx. But can you really get somebody to sit back, some transportation czars, some, somebody to sit back and say, let's undertake this whole thing. Seems like a large piece of the pie to swallow. I mean, I think the, the dialogue over the past 10 years has shifted in major ways, right? We, we see 42nd Street, for example, that has become very pedestrian friendly. And this administration, I think, has shown um, uh, great strides in, in trying to make New York City just a, a, a more greener, more friendlier place. Um, and and more tra pedestrian transportation for so, as so well you're too, not so. you he hasn't backed off one bit you said no, no this, so, as no. large yeah. a project as it is you think these are the things that this is the right. dollar we ought to have and Gary I mean just to add to that I mean I think David is spot on right this started out by the state wanted to fix a bottleneck on a highway right and this alliance through the way that it looked at that problem mm -hmm. and the way that it advocated and framed the issues over 12 long years has parlayed that into a $1.5 million federal study that comprehensively looks at that, that map of the whole network is from the city of New York and it is their definition of what they said that they were looking at in this study. Mm -hmm. So that bold mm -hmm. vision brought us to here we are today. Uh, and we had some more uh, pictures we're gonna show folks. So uh, let's uh, pop something up there. And see what it is now. Now, what is this? So this is the at grade section of the Cross Bronx. I mean, of the Sheridan Expressway. Excuse me. On the left hand side of the picture is the is Starlight Park, which opened uh -huh. up uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago. That's the. So when you say at grade, that's the part where it comes down yeah. to down yeah. to earth. Down, yes, <laughs> as opposed to being elevated. And then on the right hand side, and a little bit outside of this picture, is West Farms Road, and uh, the new home of the Signature Development. Okay, uh, the the signature development that you would like to see as part of this. Well, uh, the actual the, the signature development is already slated to 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 go. Uh, Department of City Plan. This whole neighborhood was rezoned um, to have some affordable and market rate housing as well. And too. so that's already underway. That's mm -hmm. already of course. Underway. City planning with a capital P L A N N I N G is really mm -hmm. what this is about. We're trying mm -hmm. to get a real plan. Go ahead. What's next? 
Okay, now this this is a, this is a much more unfortunately a much more familiar scene this I think looks familiar. to a lot of us uh, mm -hmm. as uh, you know if you're in that area, right? So this is what Whitlock and Westchester Avenues. I mean, and this is a, a nightmare for both trucks and pedestrians alike, right? Um, uh, what we're seeing is that many folks who are getting off the Whitlock train station or even just trying to get to Westchester Avenue have a real difficulty crossing the street. And if you go outside in this, this intersection after 4 o'clock any weekday, you will be in a, in a nightmare of congestion traffic. I, you know, I, I almost embarrassingly say, I can't tell you how many times I've driven to the end of that mm. and then got to the end and said, oops, I missed the turn off and then have to drive around in a circle and either get back on or traverse through the streets mm -hmm. uh, to find where I was going. And, it, it, and I've been, I live in the You're Bronx all my life. And if I'm, again, if I'm doing that, I can only imagine what, what truck drivers and others are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I frankly, I never felt that it was even uh, uh, marked properly with uh, signs so that you really knew what was coming and, uh, you know, what you were missing if you didn't get off here. Yeah, I mean, the, stripey, the street even lacks striping and, and, and street curbs, right? And, and we've been working not only to think about, like, access in the Sheridan, but also um, making that, that area more pedestrian friendly. So there's, there's um, striping coming on the streets, there's sort of street cutouts coming. Mm -hmm. It's a really exciting opportunity. Well, one, one expert said to me that when, when he looks at what the possibilities are, he's concerned that in the long run that's all we're going to get, that all they're going to do is oh, restripe stop roadways, signs and stripes, mm -hmm. signs mm -hmm. and, stripes and then after the $20 million that some people have questioned and mm -hmm. being spent on a study and all this work, that that ultimately they're going to put a nice face on it and you're not going to get much concern about that? Uh, I don't think that that's going to happen, but I do think there is the potential um, for the city to go smaller than it could. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's keep, we had a couple more, right? Yeah. Uh, let's uh, see the last couple of ones and then we'll try and, okay, now we're, this is the, uh, uh, sure. David, a similar scenario? Is that what we're talking about? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can speak Elaine? to this. This is, uh, this is Hunts Point Avenue. If you are leaving the Hunts Point Peninsula and trying to get to the express train station, the six train station, you have, uh, you got Mr. Softy there, I think, making the turn right over the pedestrian crossing. This is an entrance to the Sheridan Expressway, trying to get on there. Right now, uh, you have more than 60,000 uh, users using the, the train station every week, and there is slated for this exact same area, a Metro North station that's going to increase the pedestrian traffic. So we'd like to see this ramp close and this intersection safe to cross. And, and uh, you know, leave that picture up there yeah. uh, for a moment, Jane. But I will tell you that mm -hmm. that picture to me mm -hmm. tells a lot of the story because there you see above the roadway that really all the trucks need to get to because yep. that's the way the heck out of here yes. or in. And yet you know, they don't jump. So you're going to need a ramp, and if you could build some direct access that goes over mm -hmm. this whole area, then all of a sudden you've transformed mm -hmm. it. And then, of course, uh, the question about the usefulness of the Sheridan would come back in. Uh, did we have any more? Was there uh, another? Uh, that was the last one? Okay. So um, now what's next, Elena? There is, um, uh, there's a deadline now, and there's, there's a hearing. Explain to me what's next. Well, um, so as we mentioned, the city is in the middle of this study, or it's, as, I wouldn't say it's like the halfway point. It's, it's mm -hmm. nearing the end of the study. And by June, they are expected to uh, issue their final recommendation. So as I mentioned, they have different scenarios. They have a couple of different versions of what they are calling modify, right, that radically transforms the road and creates developable land um, and accomplishes a tremendous amount of what our community plan has been seeking. Um, but then they also have options to retain the Sheridan, uh, and they have an option to not build anything and to assume that there will be no change in the Bronx, right? Mm -hmm. So amongst those, um, there's a lot of conversation about the details and about which one is going to be selected. There's been some preliminary stuff shown. There's a lot of data that remains to be seen, including mm -hmm. the emissions, et cetera. Um, but uh, the process, quite frankly, I don't know if there will be a hearing. Uh, well, wasn't there yeah. something in June, a deadline mm -hmm. of when the city... June is the deadline. June 6th? Is the, I don't know about the 6th, but let but me know if you I'd know. I thought I read that somewhere. But, uh, but, but early June is when it will be final. Between now and then uh, is the time to have an impact. Mm -hmm. uh, David, let's talk about uh, that impact. Uh, there was a, a fascinating and, and a very uh, interesting story in the Hunts Point Express about mm -hmm. a $20 million study and whether, you know, the money really went to studying it. And then, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we don't, uh, you can check out the Hunts Point Express, which is a wonderful yeah. paper. But um, uh, 
Do you feel satisfied that it's really getting a look, or do you think some of that money has kind of been squandered mm -hmm. and that there, you're, you wish there would be other things that they would look at? I think we we do feel that the that New York City is doing a better job with looking at the details of the Sheridan Expressway far better than the New York State Department of Transportation did. Um, one of the things that we found in their study in, in back in 2006 was that a lot of their study had, uh, you know, some of their modeling was faulty, some of the details and information that they shared with us was shoddy. Um, and that's what really forced the impetus for us to really push to continue for there to be further study of the Sheridan Expressway. We felt like the state wasn't going through the due diligence that was needed to have a, uh, a economic analysis. Uh, we wanted to see housing development on the, on the site. We wanted to see uh, potential access, uh, pedestrian access at the at grade section. And the state had a hard time, the State Department of Transportation, who are, are you know, by the nature of their mandate is designed to develop <laughs> uh, highways, had a hard time really seeing themselves um, removing a potential highway. So the, what, what the Tiger 2 study presented was an opportunity for us to do a multi-layered uh, cumulative study that looked at a triple bottom line analysis and had an economic analysis and uh, jo jobs, you know, housing. It was far more comprehensive than what the state was able to do. That, that is a hopeful uh, explanation as opposed to saying, gee whiz, they, they never studied it. And I guess the skeptics and mm -hmm. us who have seen so many of these projects would say, gee whiz, you know, well, they're just giving you short shrift and yeah. they're not getting there. Um, Elena, the final word uh, for you. Um, what do you expect? What, what, realistically, what mm -hmm. do you think will happen? What do I think would happen? That's a dynamite question. <laughs> I, mean, I, think it, um, I think we are going to see radical change for this portion of the Bronx. And if we follow this pattern, we will see it being led by the people that live there. Got it. And, uh, we we, we got to run. Yeah. Jane is telling me to wrap it up. Okay. Um, uh, David Shuffler from Youth Ministries of thank Peace you, and Justice and Elena Conte from uh, Pratt Institute. Thank you. And if you have further comments or questions on anything you heard on tonight's show, or anything going on in the Bronx, and email them to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com. You can make a comment on our Facebook page, and then we'll read those things on the air during a future edition of our program. Archives of Bronx Talk are available at bronxnet.org. You click Bronx Talk on the right-hand navigation bar. Also, please become a fan of Bronx Talk on Facebook. Next week, we'll be joined uh, by a former Bronx Borough President, now the chair of the MTA, Freddie Ferrer, will be our guest. Uh, on that night. Then the week after, we'll celebrate uh, the coming of spring with a music show featuring Bronx children. That'll be on Monday, March 25th. Should be fun. Bronx Talk, of course, we're here every Monday night, and uh, we'll see you next week. There is also a very attractive extended warranty option that includes free service and parts for the next five years. But there's no need for you to get that. You failed to get the test you needed at the doctor that would have detected disease early enough where it could have been treated. So you won't be around in two years to see him grow up, which means the warranty would be useless.